because almost everything we've ever put out, hundreds of papers, uh, people always criticize. So it's what you expect as a scientist. That's how it works. Um, but we tend to, to push the envelope so it gets people upset. And that's the idea. We like to do that. Um, and so over the years, we've had pushback on everything from longevity genes controlling aging to molecules in red wine that affect longevity. And this new work, I think most people are accepting of it, actually. It's one of the first papers we've put out where people go, okay, that sounds pretty, pretty realistic. But there, there's this gut feeling uh, of, of some people that it sounds too good to be true. There has to be a problem. Is it going to cause cancer? Is it not going to work in humans? Maybe it's easier to do in mice, but not humans. But that's natural. You know, every time something sounds too good to be true, we have to be skeptical. That's what we do. Uh, but I think the fact that we have, have shown here that there is a backup copy of youth means that there's, it's going to be possible, whether it's me or someone else, it's going to be possible to truly reset the body's age, not just by one or two years, which has been done already, uh, but by decades. And really the, the question is, how is that going to work? Is it going to be a gene therapy, which is what we used in the mice uh, and we'll use in the eyes, or will it be just taking a few pills for a month and going back in time, or is it going to require stem cell therapy? And actually the interesting thing is that now there are, there are dozens of companies working on this, even just since December, uh, because it's such a hot area. And literally billions of dollars have been now brought to bear in this area uh, and will be put to work. Uh, again, making it clear to me that it's not a question of if this is going to happen, just when.